<laughs> Welcome to heaven. Dreams, true or false? <laughs> All are ephemeral. <laughs> Might as well drink more soul glad instead. Hi there, friend from a distant land. I hear the Watchmaker's legacy is right here. Let's say we go treasure hunting. Is that all? What a huge clocky. <laughs> Looks like the Watchmaker also left his mark on Dreamflux Reef. fortress is uh, pretty different from that in the beautiful dream. When I first saw it, I was in awe too. The sky here, it's like a reflection of the 12 dreamscapes. What's even more bizarre is that this place is also separated into trade and residential areas. The layout may be simple, but the facilities are very comprehensive. It seems that there are quite a number of people living here. Though both dreamscapes have distinct styles, the architectural designs are quite similar. Works of the same hand, perhaps. Hard not to speculate on the connection. But there's no point in overthinking things. Let's meet up with Himiko and the others first. Take a right turn at the end of this road and you'll reach the Trade District. There are more people there. And perhaps someone knows where she is. Not coming with us? The Astral Express likely needs room for some internal deliberation. In the meantime, I'll try and locate Gallagher. Sure. Let's reconnect later. Letting her go was the right decision. Further observations are needed before we decide whether to trust her. But first, there is someone I need to talk to. Let's go. I'm sure you've already noticed him. He's right over there. The Reverie Hotel's bellboy. How did he end up here? And right after Miss Acheron severed the beautiful dream, We'd better check, just to be sure. Huh? You were the guest from before. <laughs> we meet again! And a new friend. Oh, uh, forgot to introduce myself. I'm the hotel's bellboy, Misha. Hello, Misha. I'm Welt. We met in a dream. Oh, and who might this be? Tick tock! Old friend and new friend! Let's high five! Your, uh, memory zone meme? Nope. Clocky is a good friend of mine. We all live here. How did 
did you two get here? This dreamscape isn't supposed to be open to the public. I wonder if it has something to do with Sleepy. So, this is your home? Yep. After my work in the beautiful dream ends, I'll go back home. Commuting used to be more convenient, but ever since travel became cumbersome, Sleepy started ferrying people back and forth between the two dreamscapes. This Sleepy, can you describe what it looks like? Sleepy is a memory zone meme. Looks fierce and has many eyes. But it's actually really well behaved. Gallagher's been taking care of it. Based on the description, that meme is indisputably death. A nightmare for the family, but for the people who live here, well, that couldn't be further from the truth. D death Not in a dream, surely. Sleepy's just a little aggressive, and sometimes messes up by fetching the wrong guess. But it would never hurt anyone. I see. Has it brought back any guests recently? Say, in the last day or two? We're currently investigating a missing person case that occurred within the beautiful dream. I see. Then you'll have to speak with Gallagher. But he's currently busy hosting a visitor from the Oak family, and specifically asked not to be disturbed. Um, Mr. Yang, the person you're looking for... Is it Miss Robin? Mm, just as I thought. Considering what happened with Miss Firefly, this doesn't come as a surprise. If you're looking for Miss Robin, I can lead the way. She told me that she'd be willing to meet with outside guests. If it's not too much trouble. Also, we're looking for our missing companions. Uh, a woman with red hair accompanied by a girl with pink hair. Have you seen them? Oh, I... I haven't. But please, rest assured. Dream Flux Reef is a small place, and it's not as bustling as the beautiful dream. But its safety is unmatched. Uh, how about this? Since it's your first time here in Dream Flux Reef, I'll be your guide and help you find your companions. And then we can all go visit Miss Robin together. She's gone to Mrs. Grace's to visit the children. She won't be leaving anytime soon. So there should be enough time. All right, then. We'll uh, follow your plan. Well, we now know the answer to both murder cases that have caused such commotion in Penacone. As for the intentions of the mastermind behind it all, we are still none the wiser. Uh, no idea. But its connection to Gallagher is worth digging into. Regardless, we have to find him. Say, you mentioned before that you saw a clocky that only you could see, right? I can't shake off this strange feeling. Am I really still so young at heart? Forget it. <laughs> it's not important. Uh, we'd better just follow Misha. You know many locals while waiting for you guys. Everyone here is living a self-sufficient life. I don't know how to describe it, but this place feels like the real dreamscape. This right here is what being a cowgirl's all. Evening, Jesse. Um, is it evening? Welcome, Miss March. Who might these be? These two are my friends. As for the man lying on the ground, uh, he's a scaredy cat who fainted from fright. <laughs> I see. Another poor guy who accidentally ended up here. I'll take care of him. There have been a lot of new faces lately. Things must be tough in the beautiful dream. The few remaining havens of freedom in Asdana will soon face trouble. Do such things often happen here? 
Not really, but they're becoming more frequent now. Guess it's one of the signs of the sweet dreams collapse. This man has had quite the shock. Could you help me find a Halovian lady march? Her songs can heal mental wounds. A Halovian lady? That must be Robin. She's also here in Dreamflux Reef. Huh? Robin? But I thought she... Oh, right. If Firefly is here safe and sound, then it means Robin must be okay too. Misha is about to take us to her to find out what happened. But before that, let's meet up with Himako. You were with her earlier, right? We met some stowaways in the residential area. Most of them came from neighboring star systems. I heard that places like Dreamflux Reef are scattered throughout the memory zone of Asdana. Like islands in the ocean. They existed before the family arrived. I also heard that when Dreamflux Reef took shape, it was the center of all dreamscapes in Peniconi. If that's true, it's no wonder there are so many similarities between this place and the sweet dream. Himeko must be gathering information. Let's hurry up and get going! This is where we split up. She can't be too far away. So that's how it is. I never imagined we'd gather the remaining details here. <laughs> to borrow Gallagher's catchphrase, what an unpredictable twist of fate. Himeko, here they are! Oh, perfect timing. Now that everyone's here, I'd like to introduce everyone to Micah, who's partly in charge of the Land of the Exiles. Micah, these are my companions. It's a pleasure to meet the Nameless. You know us? I've been keeping an eye on you since the day you arrived in Penacony. We would have met under more appropriate circumstances if Dreamflux Reef hadn't been isolated from the Twelve Dreamscapes. <sighs> Please, allow me to formally introduce myself. I'm Micah, the Gravekeeper of Dreamflux Reef. Gravekeeper? Life in Dreamflux Reef is pretty liberating. Everyone here mostly keeps to themselves, without meddling in others' affairs. My daily task involves cleaning a few tombstones. You're too modest, Micah. When lost dream chasers stumble upon this place, you're the one who takes care of them, guiding them back to the sweet dream, or showing them how to survive the wild dream chaos. So, a uh, guardian of sorts. Hmm? Uh, were you talking to me, Mr. Yang? Mm hmm? Hmm? Uh, on that note, Mr. Mika, uh, which tombstones are you referring to? We didn't come across any graveyard when we arrived. <laughs> They're actually just symbolic stones. But since you're curious, Mr. Yang, I'll take you there. I have a feeling you might find something of interest there. Uh, but before that, you have an important guest joining you. Important guest? Who could it be? This way, please. The roads here in Dreamflux Reef are a bit run down, so watch your step. that I tried this music style, but I've gained some valuable insights from it. Oh, I can't thank you enough, Robin. Well, these kids have made incredible progress in only a few days. It was nothing, Grace. I merely taught them how to sing. It was you who brought hope into their lives. Life must be quite difficult for them in reality, I imagine. That's right. 
Whenever it's time to say goodbye to these kids, they're reluctant to leave. But I've explored every corner of Dreamflux Reef, talked to everyone I met, and they all told me the same thing. This shattered dream is not worth clinging to. <laughs> it seems you truly are a child of the Harmony. Emma and Andy are orphans I took under my wing. Carol there, with her blind eyes, used to work at a nutrition center in the outer ring of Penacone. And as for Gary, he's been living with autism since he was a child. They're not old enough to enter the sweet dream managed by the family. If we compare people to birds, these kids are like fledglings with impaired wings. But in this dream, well, they can fly freely. Even if they stumble along the way, well, they're still relying on their own strength. And me, an old lady with no legs. Well, without this dream, I couldn't even walk toward them. I'm glad that you found a new life here in Penacony. It's just... Don't worry, Robin. Dreams have their significance, but they aren't everything. But you know what? Emma and Gary aren't plagued by their insecurities anymore. No, and Carol is learning how to cope with her blindness. And Andy is livelier than ever. Well, even I've become more optimistic. You see, in dreams, we learn how to live. Once we return to reality, we learn how to survive. And should our feathers be damaged, then we share our wings with one another. There's no need to covet an illusory sky in dreams, because we have the right and the ability to fly towards a broader horizon. It's a relief to see you safe and sound, Miss Robin. It's nice to see you all again, Astral Express crew. I heard my disappearance cause quite the commotion out there. I'm really sorry about that. Since you're here, can we assume that you're fully aware of the situation in Penacony? Ever since I returned to Penacony, my voice started to change until it gradually faded away. At first, I thought it was a temporary ailment, perhaps due to having been away too long. I thought maybe it just takes some time for my body to acclimate to the high concentration of memory and Asdana. But now it seems the root of the problem goes way beyond me. There are elements around me that don't align with the harmony. And losing my voice is just one of the signs of the sweet dream's collapse. The sweet dream's collapse? That memo keeper mentioned the same thing. So it's real. While I was away from Penacony, the boundaries of the Twelve Dreamscapes kept expanding outward. But whenever I mentioned the anomalies in my dreams, all the family heads refused to talk about it. Only my brother was willing to respond. Later, I discovered the secret letters from the IPC Ambassador, which further convinced me that there are hidden secrets beneath the surface of Penacony. So, following the clues in the Oak family's dossiers, I found my way here. The land of the exiles. Concealed by the family under the guise of death. A dream within a dream, where Penacony's past is buried. Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, but the harmony in this place resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. It's regrettable. But the family has experienced betrayal. The traitor... or traitors... abandoned their original principles and... using the name of Harmony... exploited people's weaknesses to turn Penacony into the planet of festivities. Trapping everyone in the illusion of the sweet dream. This is not the strong defending the weak, but rather the strong exploiting the weak. A world without equality won't ever be favored by the Harmony. And naturally, those voices blessed by them have lost the ability to sing. 
Could there be another force influencing the family's shift in philosophy, Miss Robin? Considering what happened with Acheron, it's difficult to conceive of another entity within the realm of the Harmony capable of influencing everyone. Unless a power surpassing that of an Emanator is involved. <sighs> I'd heard about what happened to the Sienjo Alliance. But as far as I'm aware, the family hasn't faced any such external interventions. Who knows? Perhaps I've just been away too long and missed something. Regardless, I cannot accept my home is moving towards the very opposite of what the Harmony represents, while still claiming to uphold it. I must uncover the reason why Mikhail cut ties with the family, and who exactly it was who betrayed us all. Do you remember our arrangement, Mr. Micah? Well, here's my answer. I've decided to forgo my role, and never step foot on the Charmony Festival stage again. <laughs>